It's a man, baby. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Humanity. Look how far you fall. Greetings, programs, and welcome to Pop Culture Therapy. I'm your host, Stone Loki, and yes, this is the last episode of The Mandalorian, the last I will be talking about Star Wars for a long, long time, at least until we get Season 2 of The Mandalorian, unless something really big happens. Everybody's talking about Star Wars right now. Everybody's talking about the numbers and how much money it's pulling in and the Rotten Tomatoes score and how Rotten Tomatoes is basically completely foobarred now. You can't trust it. Anything rated below a 3.5 out of 5 is not being tallied in the final scores. I may do a video about that, but it won't be about Star Wars because, honestly, I am sick and tired about talking about Star Wars. The Mandalorian, that's another story, but this is it. This is the last episode we get. This is the final episode, and what an episode it was. Truly spectacular. Jon Favreau knocked this shit out of the park he did an excellent job with this series, and this is it. This is what we get. We will be getting a season two. As far as I know, they have already started filming season two, but that'll be at, at the very at the earliest, I think, this same time next year. So we won't have any Star Wars over the next year after the dumpster fire that was Rise of the Soy Walker. So let's talk Mando. <clears throat> We get back to the Mandalorian exactly where we left off in the last episode. They are in the cantina. Cara Dune and the Mandalorian. Baby Yoda has been captured. This is by far the funniest episode. The banter that goes on between the two scout troopers who capture Baby Yoda is the funniest shit I've ever seen in a Star Wars movie. Truly great. The dialogue in this episode is awesome. The banter between these two scout troopers had me laughing. I was almost rolling on the floor laughing how funny this episode was. So, Moff Gideon has the Mandalorian and his group held captive in this bar. They they bring out like an E-Web blaster and, and Moff Gideon tells the Mandalorian he's got until sundown or they're going to blow the hell out of the bar. They are working on an escape plan to get down into the sewers. They can't get the sewer grate off. Nobody's got anything left that can get this sewer grate off of the wall. And as the scout troopers are sitting there, and they're hitting Baby Yoda. Poor little Baby Yoda. They're like slapping him on the top of the head, hitting him, treating him like shit. <laughs> when IG-11 IG shows up, I almost said IG-88. IG-11 shows up and kicks the living shit out of these two guys. It's almost like that scene where you see a guy use a door jam to crush someone's skull. It was so perfect. It was so funny. He, he like bashes this guy's skull in, the scout trooper's skull in, on the front forks of the speeder bike. And I was just laughing my ass off. Baby Yoda, of course, is like, ooh, ah. And IG gets on the speeder bike and rides into town, and Baby Yoda is giggling. We have not seen Baby Yoda giggle like this, but Baby, Baby Yoda is literally giggling on the speeder bike as IG's flying through the town shooting these stormtroopers. And this gives the Mandalorian and his squad just enough time to get out there and start kicking Stormtroopers' ass. Cara Dune is a fucking badass. I don't care what anybody says. They can say, oh, SJW. And no, no, this is not SJW. Cara Dune kicks some fucking ass in this episode. The Mandalorian kicks some ass. Carl Weathers' character kicks some ass. Mandalorian goes out there, grabs the E-Web blaster, and just starts mowing down fucking stormtroopers left and right. It was it was awesome. Seeing the way they got out of that bar was just spectacular. I absolutely loved it. The Mandalorian ends up getting injured at one point. Moff Gideon ends up blowing up the power pack to the E-Web blaster. 
And it doesn't look like Armando is going to make it. It honestly doesn't. It looks like he is down for the count. They they send in a flame trooper with the storm trooper with the flamethrower on it. Yeah, if anybody's seen the helmets they've been selling, these are one of them helmets, the white and with the red stripe down the middle. He goes in and he's gonna kill them all. He's gonna barbecue them all when Baby Yoda gets up and is like, "Uh uh-uh, biatch. And stops the flames and shoots them back at the flame trooper, blowing up the flame trooper. It, it was awesome. But the Mandalorian's down, and he's not gonna. It doesn't look like he's gonna make it. So he hands Kara his insignia, the the Mythosaur insignia, and tells her, "Tell the Mandalorians this child was in my protection, and get it to the Mandalorians in the sewers. They're hiding out in the sewers. Give them this symbol." And they will protect the baby. And she says, no, I'm not leaving you. And he's like, no, go. I'm dead. Go. And IG-88, or IG-11, I keep calling him 88. I grew up calling this this bastard IG-88. Because that's what he was in the movies, in the original movies. It was IG-88. So IG-11 says, I'm staying with the Mandalorian. Cara Dune, Carl Weathers, and Baby Yoda hightail it out of there into the sewers. And IG tells the Mandalorian, I'm going to take off your mask. I've got to check you out. And he stops him. He says, no, no no living thing can see my face. You know, it is the way. And he obviously IG is not a living thing. So IG takes off his mask. It is Pedro Pascal under the mask. He's a man, baby. All those people, that oh, the mask is going to come off and it's going to be the Mandalorian. A woman, no, it was, it's, it's Pedro Pascal. Um, and you find out that his name's Din Jaro. And IG spreads some Bacta on his head and tells him, you know, your primary processor is damaged. And the Mandalorian's like, you mean my brain? And he's like, yes, it was a joke. So they end up meeting back down in the sewers and, um, They've got the baby. They come. They, they're they're trying to make their way through the sewers when they come to a mountain of helmets and armor, and it's it's dead Mandalorians. They stripped the armor and the helmets off the Mandalorians in the sewers, and there's a big pile of helmets and armor. And the only one left is the matron, the the blacksmith matron, the head of that of that particular clan. And she talks to him about Yo- Baby Yoda. And he, the Mandalorian tells her he can move things with his mind. And she says, yes, I have heard of these, these warriors. They, they fought in the Great Mandalorian War. They were called Jedi. And Pedro Pascal, the Mandalorian, is like, you mean they were our enemies? And she goes, no, not this one is not our enemy. Those were our enemies, but this is not. he has nothing to do with this. So she tells him he has to go on another quest. He has to go and find the home world of Baby Yoda and take Baby Yoda back to his people. And as she's t- telling him this, she's making something in the forge. And what she does is she makes him his signet, his insignia that goes on his armor. And she tells him, now you and the baby are a clan of two. So the Mandalorian now has his own clan. Baby Yoda has been accepted into the Mandalorian clan. He is now a foundling. I thought that was fucking epic. I mean, I had a big smile on my face the whole time I'm watching this. They end up they end up getting to this this little barge underneath the city in the lob where the lava flow is. And they end up taking this barge almost all the way out of the city. Ella and the matron gives gives the Mandalorian what she calls the Rising Phoenix. She asks him, "Have you were you ever trained in the Rising Phoenix?" And he says, "Yes, as a child I was trained." And she hands him the jetpack. So the Mandalorian's now got the jetpack. He's he's full on Boba Fett outfit now. Um, they they get through this this lava tunnel, and they're almost out when the Mandalorian uses his helmet to see that stormtroopers have have are all around the entrance. They've surrounded the, the entrance to the lava flow and they're waiting on them. IG 
88 says my manufacturer has implanted the 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 self destruct device like in the very first episode you they keep talking about that so IG sacrifices himself at the end to kill the stormtroopers he blows himself up and the, and baby Yoda watches this and is kind of like sad you see his ears go down because IG's like his friend all these people are now his friends you and you can tell that that there's so much. There's so much, so many little things that you can tell. Like the when the Mandalorian, even with the mask on, you can tell he's got emotion, and you can tell when he looks at something that he's processing that in his brain, trying to figure out what he's going to do. And the the way they have shown that in this series has been perfect. The way they've shown Baby Yoda, the way they've shown the Mandalorian, and these characters have been perfect so far, in my opinion. So Moff Gideon in the end shows up in a TIE fighter. He's going he's trying to kill them all, of course, so he can get Baby Yoda. The Mandalorian puts his jetpack on. This is the way. And flies up, attaches himself to the TIE fighter, and ends up like slapping a bomb on it and jumping off. And that downs the TIE fighter. So he talks to Cara Dune and Carl Weathers' character and tells them, I'm going to go do what I've got to do and find this little baby's home. He leaves them there to run the Bounty Guild. Carl Weathers' character tells him, you know, when you get back, you will be the greatest bounty hunter in all of the guild. You know, you'll basically be running the guild when you get back. You'll have your pick of the top missions. And him and Baby Yoda fly off into the sunset. It is very beautiful. Now, the cool, one of the really cool things about this is at the very, very end, Jawas are taking apart the TIE fighter. And you see this thing come out of the, the, the TIE fighter. And you can tell, if you watch the Clone Wars, this is going to be the coolest part of... The whole series, it is the Black Saber. It is Death Watch's Pre Vizsla's lightsaber that he uses. The black lightsaber. And I'm. I was just amazed they threw that in there. He uses that to cut himself out, Moff Gideon, and he gets on top of the, the TIE Fighter and he's standing there holding it and the wind's, you know, blowing. And that's the end of the episode. Obviously, setting up for a season two. So. As far as I go, I, I will give this episode a 9. It was very, very well done. If you tie it into the episode previously, it's a 10. On its own, it stands at a 9. The best episodes in this series have been the first episode, the third episode, the seventh episode, and the eighth episode. All awesome episodes. On a whole, I will give this series an 8. There's some slow parts. There's some parts that I I wasn't too sure about. I watched every episode twice just to make sure I didn't miss anything. But some of it is boring. Some of it is boring. So an 8 out of 10 for the whole series. I think that, but I really do. The, the third episode's a 10. It, I think it was perfect. Seven, or, uh, 7 and 8 together are a 10. So th those are my final scores. What do y'all think? Leave me a comment down in the comment section. If you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe and ring that bell. And I will catch you all on the next Pop Culture Therapy.